DSM Living with Wendy Wen, Melanie Hall, and Sharon Rooney. Good morning and welcome to DSM Living. I'm Melanie Hall and today we've got a great show in store for you. First up, it's Bob Oliver. He's teamed up with the Home Depot and they've hit it out of the park. Coming up on DSM Living, I'll show you how to make our maple mustard glazed ham. Coming up, we're going to see a complete home transformation done by Modern Touches, where customer satisfaction and custom design go hand in hand. Keeping your lawn looking its best requires a well-running lawnmower, and the experts at A-Plus are here to help. It's a story of revolution, revenge, rescue, and romance. It's Les Mis at the Des Moines Playhouse. Up next, Casey Handyman is going to show us how a few little upgrades in your kitchen can make a huge difference. Coming up on DSM Living, I'm going to show you how you can turn this plain vase into this. Spring into a healthy body and healthy skin. Check out the Health and Wellness Skin Center right here in West Des Moines. Bob, you have been on our show numerous times and people say, I've heard of Bob Oliver or I feel like I know him because I see him on TV. But I always get the question, what is Bob Oliver really like? And I say the same thing. He's the same person that you see on TV. That's what he's like in real life. So how would you describe yourself and your company? Um, a real honest company. Um, I've been grown up and raised to do the right thing for people. Mm -hmm. And when you're doing that and, and dealing with events in people's lives, um, you really put together a special group of people. And it's just really a pleasure to have the team that I have go out and pursue the passion I've always had as a child to go out and help everybody with their heating and cooling, give them the best answers, mm -hmm. and just really have a, a knowledgeable aspect of what we do, but also have a conscious respect for their decisions they're making, sure. you know, and the sense of reliability they need. So you said you had a passion for this as a child. How did you get involved in this kind of business? Well, my father did it, and his father did. So growing up, uh, you know, being like dad's always been important. And I learned the important things to do so, and that was how we dealt with the customers, the sure. kind of work we did. Well, Bob, talking about something that customers love, customers love the Home Depot, and that is where we are at today. So what is your connection with the Home Depot? Well, the Home Depot and I are partnered up to make sure you get a good Home Depot installation. You can call in and set up a free estimate, and I'm very proud to be a part of it with them. It's all about trusting the Home Depot with your central heating and cooling needs. And we are here at the Home Depot. I'm with Carrie Ann. I've got a lot of great questions for her. So Carrie Ann, if people are interested in getting a new furnace or a new air conditioner, what should they do? Well, there's a few things they can do. They can come into the store. They can talk to any of our associates here. We're all well versed in how the system works and we can get them set up for an appointment real easy. Before they even leave the store, they'll know when someone's coming out to their house. Or they can go online to homedepot.com or they can even call 1-800-HOME-DEPOT. So is the consultation free? It's absolutely free. Let's talk a little bit about the contractors you use too. We go through a very stringent process in screening all of our contractors. They represent us when they come into your home. So we want to make sure that the Home Depot name is continued to be reliable and trusted. Speaking of the Home Depot name, why should people shop at the Home Depot? We've been around for a long time. We are the number one home improvement retailer in the world and we're not going anywhere. And I love your guarantee, so tell us a little bit about those. Once we do the work, we take complete ownership. So we stand by everything 100%. So if in 10 years you have a problem, you call us up, we come out, take care of whatever you need. I love it, and let's talk a little bit about financing. People are always worried about financing, so what options do you have available? We have our Home Depot credit card, and we run various promotions throughout the year for 0% interest. Um, depends on when they come in as to what we're running. We also have a project loan, and they have a real attractive interest rate for people that they can get a little bit of a larger loan to do things around the house, like new heating and cooling systems. Sounds great. Well, thanks so much for joining us, Carrie Ann. Thank you. They know the name, they know the reliability, and I think it's so great that you have teamed up with the Home Depot because you guys both are committed to quality service, service for sure, and a quality, quality product. So, Bob, congratulations, and if people want to get a hold of you or Home Depot, what's the best thing to do? Well, the best thing to do is either walk into any one of our stores in the area, um, talk to any one of the associates. Okay. Um, it's easy to get online, uh, generate a lead, and then uh, have a Home Depot associate call, and then we'll set up an appointment. Makes to, it to so easy. It. Yes. Well, thanks so much, Bob. You're welcome. Thank you. Follow DSM Living on Facebook and Twitter to see behind the scenes photos and find out what events are going on in and around Des Moines.
Hi, I'm Whitney with Fairway and Sensible Health, and today I've got a sweet twist on your Easter ham. Let's get cooking. We're gonna start by making our glaze, which is super simple. It's just three ingredients, and we're gonna mix it together. We've got a quarter cup of pure maple syrup, a quarter cup of Dijon mustard, and one cup of brown sugar. So that is it for our glaze. I've already had my ham in the oven for about an hour at 325 and you want to cook it about 15 minutes per pound and then we're going to baste it every 20 minutes after that first hour with the glaze that we just made. I've been cooking my ham with the cut side down, that way I can glaze this back part of it. So this glaze. If you've never tried a glaze on your ham, it's not overly sweet. It's actually a really nice flavor complement to the ham. It kind of tastes like an appetizer of Little Smokies wrapped in bacon and then sprinkled with brown sugar. So the flavors marry really well, but it's not overly sweet. I've had my 10 pound ham in the oven for about two and a half hours and now I want to let it rest for 15 to 20 minutes before I start carving. I've chosen to go with a bone in ham so I've figured about three quarters of a pound per person and to cut it with that bone in there you just want to use where the ham is naturally divided into its lobes and follow those lines. We're serving our Easter ham up with some garlic herb potatoes. And if you want these recipes or any others, you can visit fairway.com. And remember, the most important ingredient in any recipe is family. A good design takes the size and challenges of the space into consideration. And Lucas Modern Touches did a fantastic job with this complete transformation. So tell us what it was like working with this townhouse layout originally. Well, originally, um, it just had a lot of characteristics that just didn't really flow well together. Uh -huh. um, what were some of the things you guys did? Well, the biggest uh, thing is they wanted some reading area in the front of the uh, townhome, so we had to relocate a fireplace. And I noticed in the kitchen way more lighting. Correct. I mean, it's the small detail. Having lighting makes it just more livable in here too. I know your idea was the floor, so let's talk about the flooring yes. in here. <laughs> yeah, she uh, originally wanted hardwood. Everybody just kind of is on that fence with tile. In my opinion, it's gonna be the best product out there for durability. Sure. Um, so when I actually showed her a piece of this tile, she thought it was actually hardwood. Marie, you have done an amazing job kind of creating this Tuscany feel along with a, a rustic vibe in here too. Well, the homeowners do like a rustic feel as you could see throughout the home. So we also wanted to incorporate in, that, in the bathroom, but essentially make it look very different. Mm -hmm. um, definitely the granite has character and we were able to then add in the teak and also mounting the faucets. We talked about that, how that really is kind of a modern thing, but it works in here. And I love how you brought the backsplash all the way around and into the shower. And the shower is one of my favorite features in here. And you also bumped out the, would it be the linen cabinet that was right here before? Yes. And you added more storage in the closet. It really just feels relaxing. Sure. The heated flooring is a really nice feature as well as the heated towel bar. And just the flow of it together, we really were able to maximize the space versus what it was before. So Lucas, what advice would you give to someone that's looking at doing a remodel? Well, there's a lot of advice to give, um, you know, especially if you haven't gone through a remodel. Um, you know, one of the big things is looking for somebody you can communicate with. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things our clients really love about us is we do communicate and you know yeah we take phone calls at six in the morning sometimes and, and we'll take a call at seven eight o'clock at night every client it's their home and it's their money it just doesn't work if you can't feel comfortable you know speaking with your builder Mike and Marianne this place looks absolutely fantastic so how did you hear about modern touches 
Melanie, we were in the process of downsizing and moving because of health reasons. Mm -hmm. And um, during that process, I was watching television one morning and I saw this ad with Lucas and Marie and Modern Touches. Lucas had mentioned that they really maximize the use of space. Mm -hmm. And when I heard that, we just decided to call and get in touch with them. And that's truly how we met. What was the process like working with Modern Touches? When Lucas first told us that we will continue to work on your project until we're satisfied, yes. we thought, wow. And that's exactly what happened. It was a good experience. If we came up with any ideas, he was willing to go along with them and accepted our ideas. And they have good craftsmen to work with them. It was a very pleasant experience. Marie was so wonderful to work with because um, we, we, we met with her, we went to the vendors, mm -hmm. we looked at examples, she helped us. I really appreciated that. Mm -hmm. um, texting, I mean, we had fun throughout the project. I don't know if, I mean, every time somebody completed projects, I would take a picture and send it and text them to them, and I think they enjoy that. We certainly felt connected throughout the project. Functional, completely livable, and the best part about it, the homeowners loved working with you guys. So if people want to get a hold of you, how can they reach you? Uh, go to our website at moderntouches.com and fill out our contacts page, and you can also stop by our office uh, about six blocks east of the Bucks Arena uh, at 6781 Hickman Road. Cool, thanks guys. Find us online at dsmliving.com to watch this week's episode, see other videos, and check out what's coming up on future shows. Sometimes the difference between just buying new things and a beautiful home is a design plan, a signature piece, and a couple of small accents. At The Mansion, we know you have good taste, but probably not the time or desire to execute your own vision. Our design team is waiting to help you transform your ideas into a beautiful and functional home. Whether it's one room or the whole house, we can work with your budget and exceed your expectations. Come see us on Facebook and see what our clients have to say about working with our design team. Or better yet, stop by The Mansion and let us show you how we can help. Well, Tim, this set looks pretty dramatic, so tell us about it. Well, Les Mis, it's all about the drama of the show, but it's really about the pageantry of the story and the characters. So trying to make the scenery kind of match that. One of the fun things about the show, though, is it's really dark. It's dirty Paris. It's, it's grimy. It's gritty. It's like my hands. Um, and so that's been really fun. One of the things John said is, I, I, I wish we could do the show and there wouldn't be one single right angle because everything is almost falling apart mm. because of the revolution. We haven't gone that far. There are a few right angles, but it's been fun to try and make everything look worn and that battle-worn. I mean, have, have there been some daunting challenges in this? Um, yeah, I mean, building a barricade, of course, it's, it's all daunting. Painting Paris, I mean, that's daunting. That's what I'm doing right now, actually, downstairs. And you guys are doing something a little bit different. A lot of people know the show with the turntable, but you are not mm -hmm. using a turntable. That's right. Um, with the last launch of the show that toured and the one they're remounting on Broadway, they actually didn't use the turntable. Mm -hmm. And I actually think it makes it more about the story, about the characters. Mm -hmm. With the turntable, it was a little bit about the gimmick. It's like, oh, does it ever stop moving? Do we ever see them not turn around? I was going to ask you, do you have any key elements or any specific designs that you really love with the show or anything that's just all Tim? I actually like this backdrop mm -hmm. um, behind us right now and also the wedding scene, the grand finale. There's a beautiful backdrop that comes in that I had a whole lot of fun painting. We'll be, we will be anxiously awaiting to see it. So thank you so much for well, joining us. You. I know you have some work to be done, so uh, I'll let you go. A little bit. All right, sounds good. Thanks, Tim. Bye. Angie, I know the show is a huge job. Would you say it's a designer's dream? Yes. <laughs> no, oh, yes. Right? Yeah. yeah, it is. It has been a lot of fun. Um, I've had a, a really good time doing this because I've done a lot of stuff you don't normally do, and it's just a great story to tell. Did you have to do a lot of research for the show? Yes, I always do research. Um, this one, yeah, it's a time period we don't, the 1810 to about 1830s time period, I don't do a lot, so the kinds of things they wear and what the poor people are like, the politics of the era, yeah, lots of research. So where do you get the costumes from? Do you make them, do you rent them, do you borrow? We do everything. Uh, Playhouse has a uh, pretty good stock of stuff. We've used absolutely everything we can from stock. This was rented, a lot, all the military stuff was rented from TDF in uh, New York City. Uh -huh. We made that. This That's is beautiful. A lot of stuff we made. Uh, I also borrowed or rented stuff from ISU, uh, Fairfield High School, a um, couple other places. Sure. And I have never asked you this question, but are you ready for it? I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. How did you decide, decide to be a costume designer? Oh, I just sort of fell into it. Really? <laughs> I did. You are so incredible at it. 
Well, I've been doing it a long time, um, and it started when I was in college. I, I was interested in theater, and I just somehow ended up in the costume shop, and I just never left. I knew how to sew. I learned to sew in 4-H, and, um, and I, I fine-tuned my sewing skills through costuming. I like to tell people that I had Barbies as a kid, lots of Barbies, and pretty much all I did was dress them. We never really played with them, so I, I, I feel like that was a message. Yes, it was, this was meant to be. That was like, well, you do a fantastic job. You really have a way of bringing the characters to life through their costumes, so Thank you. good work on all this, and I can't wait to see the show. He took my childhood in his Leanne, it's a beautiful story and a must-see show. So how can people get tickets? Well, they can go online at dmplayhouse.com and pick out their seats there. They can give us a call at 277-6261 or, of course, come to this great new space, the Des Moines Playhouse, and buy their tickets at our ticket office. This is absolutely incredible, and tickets are moving fast too, right? They are going fast, and we like to tell people, don't miss out. Buy your tickets today. I love it. Thanks, Leanne. You're welcome. Follow DSM Living on Facebook and Twitter to see behind the scenes photos and find out what events are going on in and around Des Moines. Warm weather is in the air and pretty soon we're gonna start to smell the charcoal and the flowers and the freshly mowed grass. So Sean, let's talk about yards and lawns. What's some, what are some tips you can give us? Well, on mowing, this first, first time you mow, you wanna mow it nice and low and you should bag it to get all the debris and everything up. The reason we mow low the first time is to, to get that soil a little warmer because the sun can get down to it, so it'll help it green up. So when you say low, what are you, what are you thinking? Uh, roughly two and a quarter inches is, you know, if you can go there, if it's, you know, bumpy, you might have to go a little higher, but around two and a quarter inches is first time. Okay, and then the second time around? Well, then what you should do, um, steadily raise that mower up. And, and the rule of thumb is, is before June comes, you want to be at least three to three and a quarter, and you never want to cut more than a third off. Okay. So, you know, it, it, when it gets four inches, cut it down to three and a quarter. So you, then you want it to be nice and tall, and that shades the ground, so it keeps the moisture in and, and also helps produce its own through the grass. Well, we're talking about mowing, so let's talk about mowers. Now, my lawnmower has been sitting in the garage all winter long, and I'm sure that lawnmower maintenance is pretty important. Why is that? Well, you know, mowers are four and five hundred dollars real fast mm -hmm. now. Um, this mower here is uh, five ninety nine, so uh, we don't sell mowers, but th they're expensive. And uh, the, the important thing is, is make sure every spring to clean that air filter out. That's really hard on the engines and you know when you're mowing you're getting all that debris in it. So that's a big thing you want to do. Clean that out or change the air filter. A big thing that we always recommend, for the, uh, great for the lawn but also important for the mower is to sharpen that blade to start the year. And you should sharpen your blade about every 12 to 15 hours. So if, you're, if your lawn takes it a little over an hour midway through the season, you usually mow your lawn about 26 times. Chain, you know, sharpen it again. I know that you guys have something called the, is it the Sharpen Lube? Yeah, yeah we, we, we offer a service, Mobile Sharpen Lube, where okay. we come out to people's homes, uh, pull in the, in the street and drop our trailer down behind us actually and, and uh, we take the mower in, we have a, a lift and, and we clean it and sharpen the blade and we balance it to make sure it's ready to go and we wash it off and we go through the whole thing and make sure everything's working well and, and often. Sounds like a great deal. You know, I'm going to sign up for one of those and if our viewers want to get a hold of you, um, how can they make an appointment? You know, just call our office, 289-2020. Uh, we'll just come out one day and the next time you mow, it's ready to go. You make it so convenient and easy, that's for sure. Yeah, we try, we try. So, uh, the other thing on, 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 on your mower, make sure that first mow, you, after you bag it once, to take that bagger off because afterwards, uh, you, you don't need to bag your lawn and in fact it's better not to bag your lawn because those grass clippings are full of nutrition so you're like refertilizing it by not bagging it. You know I should have told our viewers at the beginning of the episode to make sure they took notes on this because there's a lot of great information you have. Thanks so much Sean. You bet, thank you. Follow DSM Living on Facebook and Twitter to see behind the scenes photos and find out what events are going on in and around Des Moines. Healthy bodies and healthy skin are in, and that is why we're here talking to Michaela at the Health and Wellness Skin Center. Michaela, this place is absolutely amazing, and you look absolutely beautiful. So what is your background? Thank you. I'm a licensed esthetician and a professional makeup artist. Well, your makeup looks fantastic. Oh, and you. I want to talk about this center. I love the energy here. It's so intimate, and yet so comfortable, too, at the same time. So you offer different services here. You have the red bed. Now, I haven't even heard that what is it it's a it's an infrared bed it's a huge huge detoxifier it helps with 
muscle aches, sprains. It helps you recover 50% faster from surgeries. Wow. It helps with joint pain. And you have something called the Biomat. Now this is amazing. Tell us about this. I know, the Biomat is, I saved the best for last. <laughs> it's a mat that I have on a bed and it feels like a heating pad, but that's just a bonus. Um, what this does, again, it's a huge detoxifier and it's been known to get rid of viral cells and cancer cells. You said the Biomat though is broken up into, is it three different areas It then? is, okay. yes. The first area is the infrared. Okay. The second area is the um, negative ions, and then the third area would be the amethyst crystals. I know, Michaela, that you are a cancer survivor, so congratulations on that. Thank you. And I know you use the Biomat and the Red Bed. I have a lot of um, issues with joint pain mm -hmm. and stomach pain, and within three to five minutes after I'm on either one of them, it's gone. Now, Carrie, you are a member here at the Health and Wellness Skin Center, so how did you hear about this? Well, I was online and I heard about it there, so I came in and I got a consultation and asked Michaela what my skin needed and mm -hmm. she got me set up with these three modalities she has here. And we're in the room right now with the Biomat. Now, I know this is an absolutely incredible treatment, so what do you like about it? I like the fact that it has the amethyst crystals and that it has the um, negative ions, which are very detoxifying. Mm -hmm. Um, just all over good for your health. I mean, so do you really feel like there is, there's there been a difference since you started coming here? Yes, definitely, in my skin and in my, my health. So what would you tell your friends about the Health and Wellness Skin Center? I'd tell them to come in, get a consultation, and get set up with the monthly membership right away. Well, this is definitely the best kept secret in Des Moines, so if people want to get a hold of you and set up a free consultation, what should they do? They can give me a call at area code 480 220-8207. And you are actually located in a great location. It is a medical facility right here in West Des Moines. So I think you guys need to call today. You want more energy, you want your skin to be rejuvenated, this is where you need to come. So you're looking at your kitchen and you're thinking, I want to put my own stamp on it. Do a few upgrades to make a huge difference. Well, Casey Handyman can help you out with that. We are in the kitchen here and Devin, I know Casey Handyman worked on the backsplash and the concrete bar. So let's start out with the backsplash. I love the stone that was chosen. Now the homeowner told me that you actually met at the tile shop with them to go through and look at a backsplash. Is this correct? Yeah, uh, that's definitely a service that we can provide. We have designers on staff and can give you just that little bit of uh, help that you need to decide what will really work to make things pop. Okay, so speaking of help, so say they come into your kitchen and the homeowner has no clue what they want to do, but they want to do a few little upgrades. Your design staff would be more than happy to, to think of some ideas. Yeah, absolutely. Now I know the homeowner is so happy with this and it did enhance the overall look, but this is a really interesting concept here. This is a concrete bar. How did you come up with this idea? Well, poured concrete for countertops has been around for several years and it just really did a good job of tying into the existing countertops and another nice thing about it is the ability to conform it to whatever size it needs to be can really make it a good solution. So this is actually stained concrete? Mm -hmm. Yeah and it has a kind of a relief to it that gives it the different color palettes and although it's perfectly smooth it has the appearance of, of having some some roughness or texture. How is the concrete Adhes is it glued on here or is and it's what's the process of doing actually that? Actually just fastened and there's several different ways and we looked at several different options on how to, to install it and this way we just use these standoffs that are bolted in the countertop and then bolted in the concrete and so it could be removed pretty easily though you would have the holes left in the countertop. Mm -hmm. But if they wanted to change the overall look of the concrete they could do that pretty easily too. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Devin, here is the million dollar question. So if a homeowner wanted to do three things in their kitchen to give it a little more personality or to enhance the look, what would you say those top three things would be? Boy, there's a, there's a lot. I'll try to name off a few. Maybe okay. Hopefully I'll stop at three. <laughs> um, obviously a backsplash, uh, which can include a countertop too, new plumbing fixtures. Uh, one that we do a lot of that I think just really adds a lot of functionality and it can add some design flair too is under cabinet lighting. Oh, sure. So it really puts a lot of light there on the countertop and can accent a beautiful backsplash too. You know, you're really proving that just a few simple upgrades can make a 
big difference. When people think about remodeling, I think they think about a big project, a lot of work, a lot of expense, but ultimately that doesn't have to always be the case. And I know the homeowner wanted to let you know that they loved working with Casey Handyman. They felt so comfortable and, and the people coming in and out, they've, they've just had a great experience. So they wanted me to thank you for that. And if people want to get a hold of Casey Handyman, what's the best way to reach you? Uh, either by phone, 225-6140, or on the website, kc-handyman.com. Perfect. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. Follow DSM Living on Facebook and Twitter to see behind-the-scenes photos and find out what events are going on in and around Des Moines. There are a lot of busy people out there, so this DIY is right up your alley. It is quick, but it looks magnificent when you have it done. You just need a few things. Pick out a vase, and if you have one with divots, it gives it more of an interesting look. Make sure you get a roll from a paper towel, some spray paint. I like to use either gold or silver, and today we have gold, and some greeneries. All right, the trick with this is to make sure you shake the spray paint for a couple minutes to get it good and blended. And then you need to go outside to a well-ventilated area. The thing with the paper towel roll is to hold it so you don't get spray paint all over your hand. You can wear a glove too if you want to, but you should be able to spray this pretty well. And go up to the well-ventilated area, go ahead and spray it all over, give it a nice even coat. And then you can bring it in and set it down on a paper towel or something to let it dry. Usually spray paint will dry in about 15 minutes, but you can start to handle it in about an hour. So once it's dry, you can then put the greenery in it like we did here. And it's a perfect, really kind of elegant look that can fit into your office or your living room, maybe even your bathroom. So you can put either flowers beside it, picture frames. It's a great look and it's also a great gift. If you want to check out any of our other DIY projects, you can go to dsmliving.com or look at our Facebook page and let us know if you have any suggestions. Thanks for watching. I'm Melanie Hall and make sure to join the conversation on our Facebook page or YouTube channel. And don't forget, you look great today, so shop local and watch local. We'll see you next time. Host Apparel by Francesca's located in Jordan Creek Mall in West Des Moines. Follow DSM Living on Facebook and Twitter to see behind the scenes photos and find out what events are going on in and around Des Moines. If you want to see your company or event on DSM Living, head over to our website and fill out a simple form or shoot us an email to info at dsmliving.com. Oh, you had a pronunciation lesson with John, every didn't you? Time, yes. Every, every did day of my well. life. This is every day of my life. <laughs> we, we have to have our, we're the stars here. Remember that, okay? Okay. We don't. Well, I'm going to flip it. You're it. I need forward. to flip it still. I'm wondering about the sweet and savory combination, and you, you think it'll... <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs>